$150,000 a year case study. The two business guys mastermind on helping a coffee shop make its money. Enjoy. This business podcast, The Two Business Guys Mastermind, uncovers for you secrets and share tips and tricks to entrepreneurship as they mastermind on how to have startup, operational, and overall business success so that you can go on to get better results. Enjoy. So, hey, Rob, let's get this guy to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. So here, here's the deal, Rob. I get a call the other day and a guy says to me, hey, listen, I, I'd like you, um, you know, take you to lunch so I can uh, you know, pick your brain about growing my business. Mm-hmm. Well, of course, I love problems. And <laughs> this is what I do for a living, helping people grow stuff. Right. So I says, well, I'm going to just go ahead and bring it to us, man. How can we get this guy brand new? Brand new startup. He's mm-hmm. in a very competitive space. He's in the the um, coffee space. Mm-hmm. All right. So we might as well say coffee slash retail. And he's got uh, specific mm-hmm. things without getting into, you know, the name itself. Um, and I'll be able to send this to him. So you guys are listening. If you're in this space or similar spaces, listen in to what we're going to be talking about, because the questions that he has and we're going to go deeper into it. But I'm thinking, OK, from initially hearing that my wheels start turning, Rob. And mm-hmm. how can we get him to his break even? Of course, you know, he wants to, you know, 10 to 20, 10 to 12,000 dollars a month or 10 to 12,000 dollars. Yeah, 12, uh, yeah 10 okay. to 12,000 dollars a month or 150,000 dollars a year. Now, what the main question I typically ask is this, Rob mm-hmm. if a person has an income goal, right? Because some mm-hmm. people like impact, right? I says, okay, what would you like your business to make you a year? There we go. Right. I was and just about to ask you, what's his revenue? There. Right. Do we know what his pro- what is what his profitability is right now? None of that stuff has been, you know, we haven't talked about that. I haven't so talked is, about all that yet. This so. is the okay. next phase. But what I want to start, you know, us masterminding on mm-hmm. just based on a little bit of this information. Right. Mm-hmm. Here's what I suggested to him. I said, listen, let's break that down into little smaller chunks. Mm-hmm. I says, mm-hmm. remember that one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year is four hundred and eleven dollars a day. Mm-hmm. Now that's selling seven days. He's told mm-hmm. me, hey, I've sold a little bit at some, you know, some shows. I got an e- uh, e-commerce play. Uh, I looked mm-hmm. at the website and I said, okay, it's not the worst website I've ever seen, but the website <laughs> is getting no traffic. And he mm-hmm. talked a little bit about that. I think he saw my stuff on LinkedIn or whatever, right? He says, hey, from an SEO standpoint, I'm not getting any traffic. Therefore, I'm mm-hmm. not getting any sales. So I looked at that and says, well, I see why. And that's why I mm-hmm. tried to talk to him about it. So, hey, I see why it's not getting any sales from an SEO standpoint. Well, because mm-hmm. there's nothing on there that drives traffic to it naturally. Mm-hmm. We'll get into that a little bit. But Rob, when we start hearing, I would like to get to X amount, mm-hmm. right? Irrespective of cost at this point, let's mastermind on some of the ways that we would help this person get to $150,000 a year in a pretty Definitely. competitive market. Definitely. And it can be competitive, but this is also one of those niche markets where like you, there's people that are selling tea, selling coffee, selling all this type of stuff. And if you can make it some sort of so the, the first thing is to to figure out who is the audience that he's selling to. Absolutely. Right. And, and and I don't know any of this information. Right. We're coming off top. So there's a there's a lot of questions that I would be asking um, to start off. Number one, who's the target market? What are their kind of demographics, psychographics? Right. And what are their emotional triggers? So Once. everybody listen to what, what Rob just said. Mm-hmm. You're talking about your addressable market, T-A-M. These are all big considerations, the total mm-hmm. addressable market, and then the layers. Go ahead, Rob. Mm-hmm. Right. And so ultimately, you and, and like you said, when you're doing a total addressable market numbers, you're trying to figure out how much money is actually in the pool to begin with. And then right. if I carve out this much, how many people does that mean that I have to have? Right. What, and you start thinking about, are you doing a subscription based model? Are you doing um, just an individual purchase model? And then if you're doing an individual purchase model, what does um, and, and what does your your lifetime value, your customers look like? What does your customer acquisition cost look like? All those types of things. But a lot of times we get into the, the, the kind of high stuff. And the, the basic thing is, if he's a startup, the question is how sophisticated is this startup? Because sometimes, right, <clears throat> you look at people, like I, I, t- I tell you this all the time. Now that I've built a six-figure business, I will never build another six-figure business the way I built this one because I built it the hardest way possible. 
And I'm never going to do that again. Yes, he did, y'all. I'm not <laughs> even going to get into it. I talk to him about it all the time. Says, yeah, right? Come on. Right? But that journey was important for me because I had to learn that pathway, right? Part of what I do is help business owners. So it was, in a, in a weird sense, it was beneficial for me because now I know all the stuff to watch out for because I didn't already blown up all the landmines, right? So I can tell you, don't step there, right? But in that space, if he's a beginning business owner, there's a lot of stuff that here's the one thing that I learned when you're when you're starting off in business and you're doing something yourself. Because like I, I did franchise stuff before I did. I, I, I built businesses that were concepts that, that, I, that I took from other people's yeah. businesses. Right. <laughs> but that's completely different than starting something fresh, starting something of your own. And so if you're starting something of your own, where it's your own coffee, your own sourcing, all the rest of that type of stuff, a lot of what most business owners have to have, and I don't know if he has, because again, I haven't talked to him, but the first thing that I would try to figure out is how comfortable is he with selling, right? How good is he? Taking the words right out of my my head, bro. How good is he at going and turning his coffee into money whenever he wants to? Because that skill can translate if you have that skill now we just have to build systems around that skill to just make it more effective but if you don't have that skill now we're trying to do two things we're trying to still build the systems to make you more efficient but we also need to build into that system effective selling which isn't a current skill set of the owner so that that's the biggest question that i would ask first is this a person that's coming to this that can sell ice to an eskimo or is this a person that really struggles with figuring out how to get how to move product? And, and I tell you, when I look at the message now, here's the thing. So if you're listening out there and we're going to send you this this particular episode. Right. So <clears throat> one of the things that I said, uh, Rob, and, I, and I'll just kind of I'm looking at my phone here, everybody. So one of the things I says, OK, I says now this is what we know that is four hundred eleven dollars a day. Mm-hmm. So then we decide, OK, well, what channels can I use to sell four hundred eleven dollars? a day for seven days a week, right? These are some of the best conversations to have with um, entrepreneurs because Mm -hmm. they start seeing the constraints and then they see how to break them, right? So here it is. Mm -hmm. I says, so now let's work backward. And and then I says, what are all the ways you're selling now? And this is what I asked him. I says, listen, you don't have to get fancy. I don't need fancy spreadsheets. I just need on a sheet of paper when we meet to have, how are you selling now? Mm -hmm. Is it wholesale? Is it retail? Is it e-commerce? Is it events? All I want them to do is write them down, right? And I says, now, no BS. I says, give me the, don't give me the, you know, hey, this is what I aspired. No, give me what it is. <laughs> right, right, what it actually now. Show me your numbers from last month. Right now, not when you're talking <laughs> with a consultant, when you're talking with people that are, you know, business growth folks like I am, and we are, Rob, it's, you, you know, give me the good stuff. Don't give me that mm-hmm. stuff that I can't go, okay, right. here's how you go from here to here. Right. right. So it's I garbage says, in, write, garbage them, write them down. And I says, now, each. Each avenue. I said, what we're going to be doing is write down each avenue currently. And I said, real numbers. I says, we'll start there. And I says, make sure you have these numbers. No necessary for fancy spreadsheets. I don't want to get people all in their head and say, I got to have this. No, no, you don't. You just have to have, here's what we're doing now. Here are the lanes, the distribution channels, blah, blah, blah. And that's where the magic happens. And we can start talking about what you just mentioned, Rob. Mm -hmm. We can start getting into, okay. Let's look at how you're you're mm-hmm. selling this stuff, mm-hmm. right? Your product, how you're yes, presenting sir. it, and then let's decide on what necessary systems. Because I've seen some some owners, Rob, that can't sell a dime. So we got to exactly. go out there and let marketing <laughs> do the work right. for us. That's the heavy right. lift, that, right? And number one, and number two, like, and this is one of the problems that I had. I've I see owners a lot that they have one thing that's working, but they're doing fifteen. So that one exactly. thing that's working isn't getting you not pouring gasoline on that fire because you got energy just all over the place. One of my biggest things when I, and this is why I talk about starting my business over again, right? When I was first starting, especially because I was starting my business, trying to feed my family with a business. So I had like three or four part-time jobs and then I was doing this. And that that's one of the reasons why I'm like, I'll never start a business like that again. The other thing about it is because it, your focus becomes just trying to make the next dollar. So you're trying to sell whatever you can sell instead of being able to look at things and say, okay, I sell this, this works. I do this pretty well. Let's do this. Let's double down. Let's do numbers. Right. And just let the numbers and the compounding effect of it work in your interest. So that's one of the big things. But when I sit down with entrepreneurs now, the first questions that I ask them, right. The first thing that I get to after I get to, why did you start your business? You know, kind of background stuff. I say, okay, 
talk to me about 12 months from now, what are your goals? Whatever they are, if it's revenue goals, if it's profitability goals, if it's productivity goals, whatever the goals are, what are your 12 month goals? But then here's the key. Where are you now? Second question. So we get current state, future state, right? Because it's great to know where we're going, but the only way we can figure out how to navigate there is to know where we are. Absolutely. Right? Sure, sure. Yep. And so all we go questions, all typical current, questions. Current, yeah. Future state, current state. And then we say, what's the obstacles? What are the things that you feel like are holding you back? What are the things you feel like are, are in the way? Because that gives me a sense of where their strengths are, where their weaknesses are, right. what their paradigm yeah. is, what their mindset is, how they see the world. Those three things I definitely would go through with them to find out what he feels the obstacles are. Because sometimes people are just, they're mis interpreting the obstacles that are in their way right like i had one of my entrepreneurs she was wanting to um she was wanting to fix her business or to, to establish business credit because she believed that not having business credit was an obstacle to her doing a, a, launching a new phase of her business and i was like mm -hmm. okay so let's look at this for a second how much money are we talking about what are you trying to get done it was like two thousand dollars worth of product and i was like okay so you could spend six months trying to get business credit and do all the rest of that type of stuff. Or you could look around at the business owners that you know that have $2,000, right? And, and especially because she knew that she could flip this and turn it in a month and pay the loan back. She just needed the advance. So the obstacle wasn't business credit from the traditional sense. The obstacle was, who do you know that has this money? Yeah, where is your cash? Right? And who and what 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 type of a deal are you willing to do so that you can go with that money? So she she works with another person in her industry. She's in the she's in the um, the, the beautician industry. She works with another person in the industry. It was, she's like, yeah, I can get that from her. Boom, she got that. Now the hair is there. She's doing everything that she's doing because she can sell like she's selling like crazy. She just wanted to have the, the part of the reason that the thing that was holding her back from selling was not having the hair in store. So then she's got to wait to get it. So then it means she got you got to push that money out, and so fix the problem really quickly but she thought the obstacle was business credit, business credit quote unquote but it really wasn't that but first we got to know where you, what you where you at where you trying to go and what's the obstacle that you think you're trying that you think you're running into i'm like oh you can just walk around that obstacle right here you don't got to go through it you don't got to go under it you don't got to go above it here's a little side door right here All right and so for a lot of business owners this guy specifically i think that you know listen to it if he's trying to get to you know 12 and a half k a month isn't a lot of money revenue wise like it's, it's funny I say that now, right? It used to be a whole bunch of money when I first started my business. But from a revenue generation perspective, right? $150,000 business, 30% of small businesses make more than $100,000 a right. year. Look, I'm not, I wasn't getting into, you know, aim higher. I wasn't trying right. to get that because typically right. I'd come in and go, aim higher, sir. Right. right? And, 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 I just says, okay, let's take a person where they are. Right. Let's try to, you know, exactly. And, and so that's what I'm saying. Like in this space, we're not talking about a, a lot of money from a business perspective, but it can seem daunting when you're only making two thousand dollars a month or three thousand dollars a month to be like, how do I get? Because that's four X. Right. <laughs> if you're making thirty thousand dollars a year, one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year is five times the size of your business. But the beauty of it is those types of gargantuan moves are a lot easier from zero to 100 than they are from 100 to a bit to a million or to a billion right mm -hmm. so in that space looking at looking at this guy a couple of things that i would look at is what are his number one the the, the things that are already working he's obviously selling coffee he's obviously making this making this work so what's working for him and how can we sell more to those people that have already bought that's it yeah so that's increasing your order card right increasing the order card number two thing that i would definitely look at with him is how can we, again, along with increasing the order cart, how can we put more accoutrement of, of coffee with what we do? How can we do some joint ventures where we get other people that are selling on our platform so that yes. the average order value goes up, but we don't have to create or source That's or it. offering we, increases, right? Offering increases. So the that value don't of what you're selling increases. Right. So now if his average cart value is $20, now you can even double it potentially. Right. And yes, you're only making 20% of that other $20, but that's 20% that you didn't really have to do anything for because you already got the customer, but now you got, you're giving them more value. And that's one of the key considerations, isn't it, Rob? When we are uh, working with companies uh, and you guys listening in, check this out. Now, listen, if you guys have some ideas and pushback or you got some other questions that you want to ask, Hit, you know, um, hit, we want you obviously to subscribe. So we want you to subscribe and hit the notification bell because guess what? 
We want you back in here listening to how we are solving for X. You put some stuff in the comment section that says, hey, here's my business. Here's what I'm trying to do. And we will bring that on the show and solve for X for you as well. So go ahead, Rob. So one of the things that I noticed from what you just said is it's about increasing value, Mm -hmm. right? Increasing perceived value. And that Mm -hmm. becomes why would that was the first question in my mind, Rob. Why would I come back for you? Now, I was over at the co- uh, coffee shop when I got the message. <laughs> I'm over at a coffee shop enjoying a cup of joe. Mm-hmm. So then I'm starting to say, well, here I am at a coffee shop. Why this one? Right. Right. And why now, would I go to another one? Why what's would I the do something? value for, uh, to, uh, you know, of that coffee shop to me? Well, in one case, it's, it's close to my house so I can walk and all these kind of things. Right. So I'm thinking to myself. What is the value? Why would somebody come to your coffee spot? A. Exactly. Right. What would be the reason they would stay? B. And then what would make them come back? Because after all, if it's just coffee, oh, it's a cool name and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, 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 rah, rah, rah. But if I got no value, if I come here and I go, man, all they got is coffee. I want other right. stuff. That right. becomes the extra consideration. And that's the key to the marketing of understanding who you're trying to get to come, because in order for you to get into the mind of that person, you got to know this. We'll go back to demographic psychographics and emotional triggers. Right. You got to know what it is about them that makes them want to go to your your store. For example, there are people that get McDonald's coffee and look at Starbucks like I can't believe y'all spend five dollars on a coffee when I can get one from McDonald's for a dollar fifty. Right. That is that that there's a dynamic that is there. Starbucks, when it started, was never about the McDonald's coffee drinker. Starbucks was about the person who had been to a a, a European bistro or had been to a high end um, coffee spot, but could not get that in their town, in their space, in their area. And so Starbucks was competing on that level and they could make the margins and they could do all the rest of that type of stuff. And then Starbucks started popping up all over the place. That was always the, the, the idea. So they knew who they were targeting. They knew that they were targeting a demographic that had that money. Same thing, Gucci. There are people that will look at Gucci and say, there's no way I'm paying 300, 400, 500, 3,000 dollars for a handbag, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for a belt, <laughs> right? There's people that, that shop at Walmart religiously and can get a whole outfit for a hundred dollars. Right. But there's also a group of people, a large group of people that wear their clothes as a symbol of their status. That's who Gucci goes after. And they know that they can make enough money off of that that group of people. They ain't got to ever touch that other group of people. That's the Walmart people. If they just deal with that group that they, that they're there, like you talked about before, total addressable market, if they just deal with that group. So it's imperative that you do the research and know who is your market, who are you trying? Exactly. Right. You said something so key, man, and it just hit my head. I apologize for uh, interrupting, but so, okay. Think about what uh, Rob just says. It's not clothes as utility. Y'all hearing it? It's not clothes as utility. It's clothes as something else that it does for you. Right. It makes you shine. It makes people feel that, hey, you know, they've got some money. It's it's status. It's that's understanding the psychographics of the person that you're selling to. Now, Mm -hmm. let's bring that in. Who are you selling to? Coffee drinkers? Okay, you get the little bit of a dopamine boost or whatever it is you get from coffee. What else? All the way to the name. Now, here's something interesting. When I looked at the name of this particular company, I was like, oh, I like that. I like that's interesting, right? I looked it up. I saw some other things out there that, you know, maybe, you know, could get a, a phone call to you. But anyway, that's not that's neither here nor there. <laughs> but the point is, there's something about the name that suggests status. Okay, yeah. let's take that. So this is the kind of work that we will we'll be doing, right? Uh-huh. Um, and it is about, now let's take a look at that status, Let's mm-hmm. take a look at that name. And do I have a subset of people right. that maybe I put a different price point on there? It's not just coffee. It's XX coffee. Exactly. And when you're drinking it. Right. So that to me, Rob, sets up the opportunity to sell more stuff. So exactly. now I got a mug that says that name. So when they mm-hmm. see that mug, people know. Oh, exactly. Now you can take the status with you. X- now you, you see yeah. how. Yep. So now you you have the the opportunity to not just sell coffee, Mm y'all. 
you have the opportunity to sell all these Status. others, as Rob said, accoutrements, I think, <laughs> accoutrements, accoutrements, <laughs> whatever, right? You have a chance to sell more of that stuff. So it's now <laughs> with any of your businesses, and now this is what we do here all the time. We mastermind, right? We're talking about how you can, you know, increase your book of business, how you can streamline your deal and we right. bring our experiences into this play. This is one of those opportunities. And I think the thing that people need to realize is like a lot of times we feel like we got to do so much more, right? But just simple numbers, basic numbers, right? Let's say this guy is doing, let's say he's doing $50 a day right now, right? So $50 a day. So we're talking about it's $1,500 a month. Nothing major. Right. We got to get to 411. But here's the key. If you if you're doing $50 a day and let's say he's got 10 customers a day, so that's five dollars a customer every day. Right. If you can get one more customer a day. Right. That's a 20 percent increase. That's not blowing it out the water. That's not doing anything crazy. That's one more customer a day. That's a 20 percent increase on how many customers you have a day. Now, instead of uh, $50 a day, you're doing $60 a day. That takes your your revenues just in those sales right? From $1,500 a month to $1,800 a month, just by getting one more customer a day. Yeah. Right. Now here's where it really gets fun because not only do it, let's say he doesn't just go from um, five to six, but then you also increase your cart, not prices. We'll talk about increasing prices as well, but let's say you just increase your cart again. Let's say you increase your cart so that they pay another $2 in the cart. So they get two other things. So the average price of each cart is $7 instead of $5, right? So now we're talking about $7 a day times 40, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, times six um, customers. So now we're talking about $42 a day, $42 a day. Now, um, we're not, did I do that math right? No, $50 a day was before they had 10 oh i messed up the number so they had 10 customers not uh right so so again so we increased one customer a day that's 11 customers a day instead of 10 customers a day mm -hmm. i apologize i did math wrong so you increase one customer a day that's 11 11 times three i mean times 30 now you got 330 mm -hmm. times your five dollars a cup of coffee so what is that uh y'all get your calculators out now yeah so what do we say uh, 330 times five, right? Now you're six, 1650. I had the math a little bit wrong. So now you're 1650. But then let's say you add $2 per order, right? So it was $5 an order, now it's $7. Let's say you got that mug that Randy's talking about and everybody gets the mug or everybody gets, uh, you, you got somebody, you, you partner with a bakery, so you get scones and they add, right? The scones cost you maybe 10 cents a scone, but and maybe it's not scone, maybe it's pound cake, right? This, this, was, this was Magic Johnson's whole deal when he brought Starbucks to the hood. One of the things he said is folks in the hood drink coffee, black neighborhoods drink coffee just like everybody else. And while we might not eat scones, we do eat pound cake and soccer to me cake and seven uh, and upside, seven up cake and, and all these other types of things. Right, so you got, you in other words, you got to add stuff to it to increase right. the value. Right. Now, here's the beauty of it, though. All of that stuff doesn't cost a lot to make. Right. For the ingredients, for the co cost of the ingredients for a, a, a sake to me cake, right, might be three dollars. But you can get 20 slices out of that sake to me cake or maybe you get eight slices. Let's say you get eight slices out of that sake to me cake for three dollars. Right. But you can sell every one of those slices for two fifty or three dollars. One cake, one slice makes you buy you a whole cake. Right now. So you go ahead and now you just increase your cart $2 because you got some, 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 some cake, right? So do the math real quick. Instead of it being $16.50, so now we're doing $3.30 times seven. Boom. You just increased your sales for the month to $23.10. So we just went from $1,500 a month to $23.10. That's $800 more a month. And we didn't increase but by one customer a month and one extra menu item on average per month. Right, These so are the small types of changes that people can do. And it's 50%, 60% increase in revenue. Yeah, and that's what I love I love about when we you know, are, when I get these kind of questions, right? When you guys send these, these kind of questions in, you know, we like working on them and thinking about them, strategizing on them, and then coming up with, it just helps us think of all the different ways. now. Rob, you know, in, in my bag of, of 
templates and tricks and and all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. i see way more opportunity it just mm-hmm. drives me nuts when i go even into my coffee shop uh when i go into my uh spot over here and i'm like y'all need to sell me more stuff <laughs> right exactly. so, so i take my cup in and mm-hmm. i'm thinking why do i have my cup when i should have your cup exactly and if i go to another spot they look and go, oh, I see you've been over to such and such. Yeah, where's your cup? <laughs> I mean, it, now these are just little things, right, that you can add, but it's also perception things. Right. Now, next thing you know, now we know this from you know, seeing very good campaigns of people adopting, let's say, beats, right? Everybody was wearing them. Beats now, by don't Dre. Get me wrong, they paid people to wear those, but but the point is. They made way more seeing, money from them what they paid. <laughs> exactly. You start seeing the superstars that have your stuff. And I'm not saying this in this particular case, but anyway, somebody sees your stuff because that's a part of the marketing process. Right. right? When we start thinking about the integration of marketing into your play, it goes back to what Rob said. How are you selling mm-hmm. your product? Is and think it about you? It. Is it a system? Is it a right. process? Is it stuff selling your product? Yeah, and I mean, you go through it, just that idea, right? Because the, the, the thing that we want to talk about, it, joint ventures and affiliate partnerships, and you're the master of affiliate marketing and all the rest of that stuff. If you've got influencers in your town, especially if you got a brick and mortar business, right? There are influencers. There are young people. There are middle-aged people. There's people that's got Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever, that are doing big things in your town. Yeah. <sighs> Actual price of a, cof- a cup of coffee it's probably going to be cents on the dollar, right? You could give them coffee for free for a year if all they did is put a couple of blog posts or a couple of, 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 of check-ins at your spot on their, on their social media as just a regular routine, but they get to come and get coffee for free. Something that simple might cost you a couple hundred dollars for the year. I, I can tell you, Rob, I had uh, someone reach out to me um, uh, that wanted to be an influencer for the juice bar. Right. Mm-hmm. So I said, hmm, okay. All right. And she's, oh, you know, I got this many followers. And I says, okay, well, you know, tell me how you're leveraging those followers. Open. Right. And then, so we made a deal. I says, Here. so I looked at her website and I saw a couple of things that I could be a service. So she's trying to pitch me. And basically I end up pitching her on, I tell you what, how about if I mentor you in a specific way to grow this, that, and the other? And she says, oh, my gosh, I could probably learn so much from you. Now we make a deal. Mm-hmm. You do this. So I, I sent her. Uh, she says, well, you know, I do a lot of stuff on TikTok. And I said, all right, great. I says, I've got some reels that are, you know, some reels that I've been sending out. And I said, I've got some uh, TikTok videos. Or from those reels, you can turn them into TikTok. She said, oh, I'd, be lo- I'd love to. And in exchange for me helping her grow what she does. Now, yeah. Could you do some of that? It speaks to what Rob says. Hey, look, we know what coffee costs, right? And we know that if you did some giveaways to some influencers and they, they influenced the right folks, now you're leveraging that marketing opportunity. Mm-hmm. You may need to phase it. Okay, so we do this kind of marketing. Everybody thinks, oh, social media marketing. Well, that's just awareness marketing, right? Yeah. Unless you're driving people to your landing page that then gets them into your rap. Exactly. So you, I look at the website, I go, okay, if I go here, which is, you know, I said, it's not the worst website I've ever seen. But when I go there, I don't know what to do. It doesn't mm-hmm. speak to me. There's no SEO. There is, it doesn't tell me a story that progressively gets me to yes, is, yes, number one, yes, number two, yes, number three, right? Yep. Yes, number one being, yes, I you have my attention. Yes, I will engage yep. with you. Yes, I, you know, and, I, and, and that becomes what the journey then is on that side, mm-hmm. right? So it, again, goes back to how are you selling? And are you out there knocking on doors? I want you out there doing whatever you have to do to get to the the um, income goals that you want. Exactly. Right? And if you start seeing that the one channel is working better than the other, everybody, listen, that's the one you pour the gas. Pour the gasoline on. Yeah. While you test out, try, dip a toe in into some of these other areas, but you, you know, we know that distribution channels or specific channels marketing channels work for a while mm-hmm. and then everybody else starts doing it and then they stop working that's why you always want to constantly have a toe dipped into other opportunities. yeah multiple streams of income as bob practice says so right. let's think about that we're going to wrap up with just going over that overview on how we you know want to help get this guy get to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year now that's not our goal 
that's his goal. And like you know, off off camera, Rob was talking about a business he's working with, and he can almost tell you, you will get further than that if we just do these steps. Now I got your mm-hmm. goal, even mm-hmm. though we look at it and we go, well, that's kind of a low goal. We don't mess with people's you know mm-hmm. mindset. We just show them take these steps. Yeah, and then watch what happens. Right, take and I always love it. And watch what happens. Right, and I always love it because what we do again sometimes, and this is one of the things I think where we kind of are, are different than a lot of the other coaches that are out there. Cause a lot of people that are out there that'll tell you what to do, how to get there, all the rest of that. But I always pride myself on understanding that there's a, there's a gap between theory and practice that a lot of people struggle with because they go and read books and see Ted talks and go to workshops and watch podcasts and stuff like this. And they're like, yeah. And so now they understand the theory. They understand that there's a pathway to get there. They understand how that you, that you can get there, right? They believe that, it exists. But then there's still the question of how do I put that in that theory into practice? Mm-hmm. That gap is what stops a lot of business owners. And a lot of times it's a belief gap. A lot of times it's a, I've just never seen it gap. There's a whole bunch of stuff that's there. And it's really imperative that, and I want to say this to all of you all um, that, are, that are listening right now, don't get caught up in the belief that you have to do everything perfectly. That's not how it works. The whole key is, over time, you may have your goals. And most of my business owners that I, that I work with, they generally, they'll have goals mm-hmm. and they'll have 12-month goals that will hit in three months, four months, five months. And they're shocked because we're there and they're like, um, so what do I do next? We celebrate the fact that we got there and then we can think about new stuff. But it's important for you to start with the 12-month goals. If you get there faster, great. But it's important because your 12-month goals, when we ask you in the moment, is as far as you can see. And that's okay. It's okay that you can't see much further. That's what we're there for. That's what we're there to help you with. And that's why Randy talks about, we, we allow people to have their goals. We don't bust your dreams, be like 12 months. That's all you're trying to do, no, that we don't do that. And the main reason why is because <clears throat> sometimes you have to get to the top of one hill so you can see the mountains. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just because we know that there's mountains on oh. the other side, it's very difficult to actually prove to you that there's mountains on the other side when all you can see is this hill. So we take you to the top of the hill so you can see the mountains. And now you get excited about going. So don't allow anybody to, to kind of kill your dream of getting to the top of that hill. Uh-huh. Like that's inconsequential. It's still necessary on the way to climbing the mountains. So I just wanted to put that out there for people because I think Absolutely. a lot of times there's a lot of coaches that are out there that are like, you should want more. You should believe if your dreams don't scare you, you're not dreaming big enough. It's like pump the brakes on that. Like, there's this is scaring me to the level up there a little bit there buddy but we start thinking about platitudes everybody right we're going to have all kinds of people that have all kinds of platitudes right and we'll, we'll wait to rob unfree-